Right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make little miniature versions of you. I'm going to clone my character, the player's character, and then plop them into the world. So if you look over here, he's going to drop down when I hit this button. Boom. I just keep releasing them into the world. As many as you want. So I'll pause the video, get a fresh world, and you can start building along if you want. All right, so I have my fresh world here. I'm going to add a part, and this is going to be my dupe station. So I'm going to call this uh, the support. That's going to hold the button. And let's see, I'll go ahead and anchor it. I will make it two by five by two. And collisions are off. Let's go ahead and change that. Plop it down. There we go. Let's make a button. So I'll do a cylinder. Yeah, I'll put the cylinder this way. And let's change that size. Let's go 0.2 by one by one. And we'll make it red. Here we go. This looks important. Whoops, I lost it. All right, let's put it on the side. Move it on up. There we go. It's centered. That's pretty good. Maybe, yeah, that's good. All right, so we have our button. I'm going to anchor that. I don't want it to fall. And I'm going to rename it to button. I'm going to take the button and the support and make a model out of it, group it. We'll call this dupe station. Cool. Now, on the button, I'm going to add a click detector. I'm just going to call this, just call it click. And I need a script too. So on the dupe station, I hit that plus sign, add a script. And I'm going to call this duplicator. And make this bigger. That's cool. Um, let me get my clicker. So that's script dot parent dot button dot click, right? There it is. And I'm going to set the max activation distance on that. So clicker max activation distance, let's say 25. Let's go ahead and do a function, local function, make dupe. Player will get passed in because the clicker's mouse click event, when we connect it to make dupe, we'll pass the player in with it. Get rid of those two extra parentheses if, they, if it puts it there for you. Let's go ahead and get a character from our player. So player, character. And in order to duplicate a character, you have to make it archivable. And true. Then we'll say local D char, that's my duplicated char, will be the char. We're going to clone it. There we go. And then we'll do char archivable. Let's return it to false. That's what it normally is. And then the D char needs to have a parent somewhere in the workspace. And I'm going to just make it the workspace. Now, the humanoid root part needs some place to enter the world. So I'll say, dchar humanoid root parts dot c frame equals c frame new vector three dot new and then we'll just put it at zero and 20, 20 studs high so it drops down into the world and you can randomize that or or do any changes you want with that but I need to get the humanoid too. So I'm gonna say local hum equals <clears throat> dchar dot humanoid. All right, and then we're gonna set some of, the, some of the values on that. So since I want my humanoid to be miniature, that's a humanoid head scale equals 0.5. Ooh, it's a value. Don't forget the value, you get an error. Head scale dot value is 0.5. So it's 50% of the, of the original size of the head. Humanoid body depth scale dot value equals 0.5. Humanoid body width scale dot value equals 0.5. Humanoid body height scale value equals 0.5. So that's pretty cool. That will duplicate the character and plop them in the world. But let's do more than that. Let's make them run around. So let's try it out. Whoops, don't put that red mark there. It's a debug statement or a, debug, a break point. So we go into the world. 
We'll notice that we can copy the character, or we can clone the character and plop him in the world, but he can't move around. Oh, there's my red button. Boom. There. So that's all he does. He just stands there. So what we need to do, go to either your duplicated character or your character, open it up, get this animate. Now the problem is, this is a local script, so this works great with players, but not with non-playing characters. So I'm going to show you, show you how to change that. We're going to right-click. I'm going to copy, copy the animate and everything in it. Notice there's stuff in it, right? I'm going to turn the game off. I'm going to go to server storage, and I'm going to I'm going to paste into. There we go. At a right-click, paste into. Now that animate script. When the character comes in the world, we're going to put a regular script in its place. And I'm going to call this animate. So this is a server script. See there's a little person on that? There's no little person on that. Let's go ahead and get everything under this animate right here. Hit shift, even play emote. Drag it up to your server script. There we go. It's all underneath there. Oh, and then get all of your code in the local script, control A, control C, paste it into the server script, control V. Now one thing that you might want to remove is at about 722, the setup emote chat hook, we don't need, or setup, yeah, we don't need that. That could give some errors in, the, in your output window. Everything will work, but it'll still, it'll be messy. Let's get rid of our local script that's in server storage. We don't need it anymore. Boom. And now, let's go back to our duplicator. And what should I do? Let's go ahead and get the humanoid. Oh, you know what else I want to do? I want to get rid of that, that little sign that goes over their head because there's going to be a whole bunch of them running around with a name on it. So I'm going to say display distance type enum humanoid display distance type dot none cool that'll be that'll make it look a little cleaner and then I want to get my local I'm gonna make a variable for this animate game server storage dot animate colon clone i'm going to clone that script and everything underneath it then i'm going to attach it to the character by making the parent of the animate script the d char cool then i'll do this little random ai for the character because now we can move them around i don't have that yet i don't have this function yet we can go ahead and make that let's go up here and do a random ai so local function rand AI, and I'm going to pass in the humanoid. But I need waypoints in the world so they can run around. Let's go to our flat terrain, and we'll go ahead and make a part here, a block. <clears throat> They're going to be invisible, so it doesn't matter what color you make it. But I'm going to make them small, one by one by one. You do have to anchor it and turn can collide off so they don't get stuck on them. And then I think I'm going to increase the position uh, so that it's floating in the air by about five studs. There. And we can call it part. We don't need to, we don't need to change the name. I'm going to hit Control D. Oops, collisions is on. I'm going to turn collisions off because I want to keep it the same size. I'm going to duplicate it in place. When I hit Control D and then move, now I have two. Right? Do a Control D, move it again. Control D, let's say move this one over here, and we'll make one more. Control D, move them back. There we go. Let's maybe move this one out a little bit. There, that'll give it, and, and we're going to go randomly to different ones. Unfortunately, your little character might get stuck on here because the AI is going to be very simple. So get all those parts that you made, select them all, and we can, we can make the transparency one so we can't see it. And then right click and group them. Call this waypoints. Drag waypoints into the dupe station. And now let's go back to our duplicator script. And in the random AI, above the random AI, 
let's get a variable for those waypoints. So local WPS script dot parent waypoints, and we'll just do get children. That will get all of our waypoints. Since we don't really have a particular order, that's that's a good way of doing it. Um, I'm going to do a a random new to get a random number generator, and I'll say local PNT for point random. That's actually the position of the point or the the index in the array of the point. We're going to go between one and the number of points. So this is going to get us an index of one of the points that are in our uh, WPS table, table or array. Sometimes I say array. So human, hum, move to WPS point position. All right, so we're going to move to that position, but we're going to do something a little bit more than that. We're going to say Hume move to finished. Whoops, finished. They spell finished right. And then connect this anonymous function. So every time we get to a waypoint and the move to finish fires, we're going to go to another waypoint. All right, copy that and paste it. Uh, that should do it. Let's go ahead and try it out. Let's go to our play and see if we got we got some movement here. Uh, oh, I shouldn't put it way over there. There we go. Boom. And now he's running around. He goes to another waypoint. So they're randomly going to waypoints, and they stop. Like I said, the AI is not very good, but it'll get you up and running. And it's kind of interesting. And then if a zombie sees him. Oh, that's kind of funny. I'm going to have a whole bunch. They start falling down, but they'll pop back up if you get too many of them. They trip each other up. Cool. Anyway, that's how you make a duplication of your character and give your non-playing character a little bit of movement.